Hi, Stella. Hello. First things first, how are you? I'm great. I'm really, really good. I'm cold, <laughs> um, but it's so exciting. It's smell outside and as an Australian, it's mm -hmm. still an absolute novelty for me. So I'm very good. <laughs> so you're enjoying yourself. I'm enjoying it, yes. That's very good. So before we get into the album, I'd like to start in the beginning. And uh, well, I just asked you um, about Wales, mm -hmm. uh, where you spent a couple of years and yeah. then obviously Australia. Yes. What kind of music did you grow up with? Um, I grew up with um, uh, a lot of music um, and most of it was very much lyrical music. Okay. You know, it was all okay. very much based on what someone was trying to say. So Billy Bragg was, a, mm -hmm. was, a, was one of the main artists I grew up listening to. Um, and then the Welsh bands like Stereophonics, okay. um, Catatonia. Um, yeah. There are a bunch, like, and we've got an artist called Paul Kelly in Australia, who's like our Bob Dylan, really. He's like the Australian poet, you know. Um, and yeah, so I, I grew up listening to lyrics, you know. Dad really loved Radiohead as well, so yeah, lucky to have a cool dad. <laughs> I can imagine at a young age, what, what kind of got you into those lyrics? Because I, I suppose some of them are quite out there. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't really, I mean, it's what my parents were listening okay. to. So in a way, I wasn't, I didn't even... I wasn't even aware that mm. I was um, soaking those things in and absorbing those lyrics and it, it was only later on in life that I, I would write my first song and then revisit an old Billy Bragg record and realise that I've accidentally <laughs> completely copied him in terms of like the guitar and I was like, oh my God, I can never show anyone this song. I've just like completely stolen Billy Bragg's song. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it's, it's like it came later. It's like it's stored somewhere in the back of my mm. brain and I didn't know... But it, I mean, it went on to then give me my, what I'm into now, you know, it, it moved towards that. So it gave me my taste. Yeah. I was going to say, because uh, had you always been into language and, and the, the written words in that way? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's always like something that I, you know, I like all music and I'm, you know, I like a good song and mm. I, I can listen to classical music with no words and I'll get a whole body feeling and experience right. and, you know, I, I have reactions to it like that without even knowing why or how. Um, but when you can mix that with a really interesting thing to say, that's a perfect song for me. You know what I mean? That is like, if you, and I, that's like the, I don't know, the money maker in my head. Not the money maker. I mean like, yeah, I don't know what you, that's my drug. <laughs> that's the heroin. Yeah. Is, it, it, <laughs> is, is there then one song or, or artist that immediately springs to mind when you think of that? Ooh. Um, there's a Norwegian artist uh, called Jenny Val. Jenny Val, have you heard of Jenny, Jenny Val? She's amazing. Um, she's got a song out called Spells, and it only came out last year. But it's actually, I, in my opinion, the best song written in the last ten years. It's incredible, and she she uses the instruments to tell the story just as much as she uses the words. You know, every little bit is in there for a reason, and um, the the chorus is just. It's like, we will, you will not be away for long. I think it's that. I think, or we will not be. I don't even know exactly because her Norwegian accent's quite strong. Mm. But whatever I interpret it as is so meaningful to me. And it's, yeah, it's an amazing song. Oh, right. Yeah. When did you start writing yourself? Um, when I was 16. Yeah, okay. that's when I had that Billy Bragg moment okay. of being like, oh my God, I've just copied him. Yeah, I wrote my first song then. Yeah. And you're writing songs. What did it, especially early on, what did it do for you in terms of kind of creatively? Uh... Yeah. It, I guess it, to me it was like just fun and getting yeah. to kind of like put things to paper at the start, you know. And, and um, from at the start really the, the joy of it was actually hearing the new, the chords and, and, the, and the way that I played on guitar. That was the big thing at the start when you're mm. young. And I think when you're young you have an... And, um, I speak for myself here, I hadn't had much life experience so mm. I didn't have any like crazy trauma that I needed to process mm. in my song so really it was a discovery period of like you know what can I play with here you know I can play piano and try this and that and it was like what do I like and and mm. but then when I became older um, I needed it like it became mm. like a, a needing thing for me and a processing thing for me so any sort of experience I was having I would use writing to process that and make light of it or, you know, make serious of it. But yeah, it's, it's kind of, it was, it was a, 
it was something I just used to get through life, I guess, yeah. Mm. And <laughs> yeah. you've played in all kinds of ba uh, bands. I, I wrote mm. down Bells Rapid, Bocho, mm. Human... Human Boy. Boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't it looks spell like that boy. right. It, yeah. yeah, it's a different... <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> uh, too short? Yes. In all those bands, if, if you look back at them now, uh, could you kind of figure out what you were, what you're doing now? The, what, could you mm. see kind of what was... Oh, what, Not at that? the time, okay. no. I mean, back then I was so, um, I was writing music, but mm. it wasn't like what I write now. Okay. Um, and, but being in those bands really influenced me. Right. Um, in different ways, I became better at guitar because I was playing in a punk band and it was really fast mm. and I had to learn these parts. And, you know, I, it just got me better at moving around chords and, and trying different chords out. And then in Human Boy, I was on keyboard. So it got me better at that. And I was listening to different sorts of music. So, and then Bell's Rapids was a whole other thing. And so in a way, I'm, those experiences right. have shaped me now to the way that I write and the way that I have my band and the way that I um, conduct myself in that way and, and write for them. And yeah, yeah. It, I'm so glad I was in those bands because it, it kind of... Um, yeah, I, it was my training, really. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What was one of the big lessons that you've learned in that period? Um, to say yes to everything okay. while you can, mm. you know. Um, and I was I was in six bands at okay. that point. You know, I was working okay. in a cafe and a bar, and work and playing like in six different bands. Okay. My bosses hated it. <laughs> uh, I was always booking nights off um, and turning up to work really tired. But yeah, I I think saying yes to it, even if it's not your style of music, I've, mm. I've never really listened to much punk music, but to then go and join a punk band was a real great experience. And it then made me go and listen to a bunch of mm. punk bands. So education, you know, it's all it's all part of it. Yeah. When did you find kind of that voice uh, that you as a solo artist would have? Um, I... I think it was like while I was in that, okay. in doing that, and I started playing solo shows mm. as well, um, and kind of getting gigs as as just as me and just my name, you know, mm. and um, and I think it was when I started playing electric guitar too. Okay. I think that was the big thing. I think for me it was up until that point I'd played acoustic guitar, um, and then I picked up an electric, and that kind of changed everything. I felt like I could say more for some reason. Mm. I felt like I could play kind of lame chords but it sounded cooler because it was on an electric I could get away with being a bit more folky you know and, and finger picking because mm -hmm. it sounded prettier because it was on an electric guitar like it yeah. had reverb and you could add distortion to the finger but you know you could just play around with it and not be so like folk in an acoustic way so I think that was that actually helped me find my voice really is having a, a good sounding guitar to work with yeah. You mentioned finding your voice, and I don't know if you did any singing in, in those other bands. A little bit, back, backing singing, but I, okay. I used to sing um, in a cover band okay. a long time ago. So, Whoa. yeah, that what? was a big, that was my training there. What kind of covers? Oh my god, Love Shack. <laughs> okay, yeah. Walking on Sunshine. Okay. <laughs> nothing wrong with those songs. No, nothing wrong until you get to like the two hundred and seventy fourth show when you wanna you wanna just like walk on sunshine out of there. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. But am I right saying because uh, did you study jazz? Uh, no, oh, okay. I went I went to music school. Right. I went to music college for a year, but I dropped out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not a very good example. <laughs> there you go, kids. You know, this is how you do it in life. <laughs> Drop out! No, I. It just wasn't really for me at the time. I think I was. I got in when I was seventeen. I just finished mm. school, and I hadn't. You know, it was. I was just not ready okay. to to um, handle the pressure of all of that stuff. So yeah, but I'm really glad I went because I met all these amazing people mm. and Talia, who's my drummer now. I met her there, okay. and I. You know, it, it got me to meet all these other people, um, and a lot of people dropped out of that college. Um, and we're all friends. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, at least yeah. you have a nice community. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A community of losers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you, uh, I mean, your voice is, is something that, especially because of the way you play and, and uh, the EP in particular, because it's, it's just you and the mm. guitar, the, the voice kind of shines through. So, mm. so how has your voice developed then since kind of doing those covers mm. to, to where you are now? Um, I think I've subconsciously... Um, uh, absorbed 
all the, every song that I've ever sung, you know, and that I sang ACDC in that okay. time and all sorts of shit. And so I think it kind of, um, I've slowly absorbed that. And then I've also absorbed artists that I listened to, you know, I had a huge Amy Winehouse mm. phase for like a year. So I think I just lit, sang her songs in the shower every night, you know, and I think that ends up kind of getting built into something, you know, mm. Um, I'll never claim to sound like Amy Winehouse. I wish that was a dream. But you know, I, there are there are things of hers that I that I will do um, without thinking about it. You know, mm. and then and then other artists. And I think it's just like how you absorb what's around you and how you how you take it all in. Yeah. And then you release your uh, EP. Yeah. And it is very well received, I think. Yeah. It's Crazy. So so when when you've been in all these bands and then you put out a couple of songs by yourself and then yeah. it kind of blows up, what was that like? Really weird and <laughs> funny. Like funny. Like I didn't know what else to do. I just laughed. Like we're, you know, we're all just like, are you is, are you for real? Like what's going on here? Because I I put out thirty cassettes. Like that was the thing, you know. And that's why I made it so raw because. Mm. I thought only 30 people were going to hear it. And I, I, in, a, in a way, for me, it was a demo tape. Like, mm. it really was a demo tape. And thankfully, it was a demo tape of songs that I was proud of. And it, mm. I wasn't 17 years old. I was 25 and I'd built my craft and I'd worked, you know, for a long time. And thankfully, I was ready. Mm. Um, I didn't know I was ready, but I just had to be. <laughs> and I, I've, I feel mature enough to be able to handle something mm. like this now. So... Um, yeah, and I, I put it out, it was, and it was Spotify and Triple J is our, um, right. yeah, our radio station in Australia. They, mm. they they picked it up and. Can I assume that songwriting is a very very uh, personal and insular thing? It for is. You? Yeah, I've had a few people say, you know, why don't we write songs together, or why don't you know, can I come and write for you and stuff like that? And I can't. Like it, mm. it's. It, I mean, there are some people that I'll write with and for for their things, but I, I just maybe when I grow up, <laughs> I'll I'll be more open to it. But it, it's such a personal thing for me, and you know, I find it really hard to let anyone in on that mm. little world. I feel like I'm a very open person in every other way, and I'll be really honest and real and blah blah blah. But when it comes to me writing the songs that are honest, mm. I have to be on my own. You know, I have to be far away from everybody and. I can be quite grumpy when I'm writing songs. <laughs> well, yeah. But I find it interesting then because what is the feeling that you have then once you have to show them because you, you, oh, you'll seclude right. yourself? Yeah, and... totally. I th it's a really good feeling because I'm okay. like, well, I've, I've gone away and I've... I think it's because I write such personal songs. I think that's why uh, a lot of the songs can are quite difficult in, in mm. some ways and they've, they've been about difficult things. So when I'm writing them... I'm, I'm back in that headspace, I'm back in that time, or like okay. I'm going through the breakup again, or you know what I mean? It's sure. all just, re I'm reliving these things. So once I've actually got it on paper and I've, I've got it on song and I, I'm done, I feel a lot lighter and okay. I feel like I can just go and, and play it okay. and I feel, I feel like, you know, I feel good about it. But so when you play them, you don't go back to the kind of the, the core emotion? I do, but it's, it's a, it, I really do. And I'll, especially with Boys Will Be Boys, it, mm. it, it's, that song will never get easier to, to sing. I was going to say yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it feels good to process it. It feels good to say it. And it, and I always go in with the hope that someone else might be going through that and it might help them process. Because mm. that's how songs work for me. I hear a lyric and I'm like, oh, I love that. That's how right. I feel. Wow, I can relate. That's I, I hate that I have to think about it, but great. Like That's why people listen to music, isn't it? Like right. Yeah, so, yeah. So in terms of the, the, uh, let's let's kind of go into the songs then a little bit yeah. more because there's there's uh, a number of kind of things that you talk about the old relationships I mean uh, yeah. like say boys will be boys that kind of whole side and old yes. man that that's yes. the kind of yeah. misogynistic yes. culture yes um, yeah. you kind of alluded to it already but do you have to be in a certain mood when you write to these type of songs I don't really know I've got no idea. And when I'm on tour, or when I'm speak, when I'm doing interviews mm. and stuff like that, I always kind of, I always have, I never have any clue as to how I feel when I'm writing because this is just such a different world mm. to how I am when I'm writing. So it's really hard for me to tap into, <laughs> okay. like tap into like where my head's at because 
I actually don't know how I write or like what the formula is. I wish I knew. If anyone knows what the formula is to writing a song, hit me up. Um, call 1-800 how to be a musician. Um, uh, yeah, I, I just like, I don't really know how it works. Um, I know that I, I know that I need to be in a place for longer than three days if I'm going to write a song. Okay. If I ever have a break on tour um, and I don't have to touch my guitar for a few days and I'm in one spot, I generally pick it up three days in okay. and I'm like, hmm, try something out. So yeah, I generally, I need a break. Like I need an, a rest from hearing music and stuff like that. And I, I want to, I need to want to hear music again, if you know what I mean. Sure. I need to, I need to hear something new. Yeah. And especially with those type of songs and uh, I suppose, um, uh, watching telly as well and, and yeah. tricks and those those kinds of mm. uh, songs how important for you is it to have an element of, of playfulness in it and a, an element of humor in a way I mean yeah it's really important I mean I don't choose to do it but I do it in a way that's allowing me to survive in in writing serious songs mm. um, and I feel like uh, it's getting better now, but in terms of how we see musicians, quite often you'll be like, oh, James Blake, that's the sad guy. James Vincent McMurray, that's the sad guy. I'm saying all the Jameses for some reason. <laughs> James Brown, I don't know. But you know, like, that's the, oh, that's the girl that writes, oh, Courtney Barnett, that's like the sarcastic humor girl. You know, they, they kind of put you into that little bubble and right. they're not, they're all really well-rounded people. If you listen to their songs more, they're actually, they're covering all of those kind of bases and mm. I try and really make sure that I get my whole personality out because I'm not always sad, <laughs> you know, like sometimes I'm really hungry or I'm really <laughs> bored or, you know, like annoying or something mm -hmm. like I feel all of these things all in one day, like any human being. So I, I really try and capture that in, in what I do. And an album is such a great opportunity mm. to be able to do that because you've got like you know, more songs than an EP. Right. So you can really get some, you can go real deep into the bad mood and then you can, you know, come out of that and you've got some time. Yeah, what was it like tackling this album? Because obviously you have a couple of songs already, but then you kind of start to build around it. So, yeah. so were you looking for certain things in songs? Or? No, I mean, I went, I kind of had a bunch of other songs that I was going to record. Okay. And we went into the studio and started recording Seasons Greetings and You Owe Me and Tricks. And then an old man, and then I wrote six songs <laughs> whilst I was in the studio. Everyone would go home at the end of the day, and I would hang out and not go home and just like sit there on the piano. And all of a sudden, I was just writing again okay. because I, I just got back from a tour and I was about to leave on a tour. It was like this little window of, mm. of, of you know, stopping. Um, so a lot of the songs that are on the, the, the album are really new, okay. which is great for me because right. I still feel like I'm there with them, you know, like I, I still feel all of those things that I wrote about. I'm still experiencing them. Yeah. Mm. There's one song in particular I want to talk about. Mm. It's, uh, I'm going to indulge myself because yeah, it's my, course, my favorite please. one. Yeah, of course, But it's Die. Oh, yay. And, yeah. and I, I like wondered that. where where that song started. <laughs> well, that song is the weirdest song I've ever written in terms okay. of my, you know, mm. fitting into my cliche or whatever. I was playing around on um, Dean, uh, who helped, who engineered and produced the album. Mm. Um, he had this synthesizer that took floppy disks, if anyone remembers floppy disks. <laughs> it's got, you know, all these old analog sounds that have been recorded onto them. So you, you take the disc out, load it up, and it was this weird guitar sound, uh, like an acoustic guitar, and then I was playing around with these buttons don't know what I was doing, it's probably breaking it. And there was a distortion button and I clicked that and that's what that first synth sound okay. is like, wow, wow. That's actually an acoustic guitar on a floppy disk. Okay. Yeah, I'm going super nerd now for no, you. Fine. You asked. Well, that's, that's great. <laughs> um, and and then I was like, okay, all right, this is this is interesting. And then we were playing I played around with a little drum machine like, do, 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 do and I really wanted to have and that was when I decided I was like, okay I want to write a song that I can go jogging to. Mm. So I, I was like, okay, it's got to be this BPM. And I went for a run to the beat, <laughs> and I was like, this is good, this is good. Like, it got, I got a bit tired towards the end, but it was, it was good. And then, um, but it wasn't. And I had this whole song mapped out, and I, all I knew was that I wanted to. So this was a year ago. All I knew was that I wanted to do. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. That's all I had. And. Up until three days before the album was done, that's still all I had. Okay. And I was slaving over it, slaving. Okay. Like, I was like, I didn't know what I was, I tried to write a song about, like, 
I don't know, I, I, that song turned was so many other things before it was what it was. And in the end, I just thought, in the end, sorry. Oh, Paul? Yeah, hello. Okay. Yes, uh, we're out of time. Oh, we're out of time. <laughs> I'll, I'll be really quick. Yeah. Um, in the end, I just went really playful with it and just went into full playful mode. And it ended up being, I actually was laughing at myself while I was recording it and I thought it was really stupid. But mm. it ended up being my favourite song, one of my favourite okay. songs on the record. So I'm glad you like it. Okay. I've just made a really weird video clip for it. So.